Hi everyone and welcome back to Star Trek Online. Today we'll be continuing the Wasteland series of missions that were released with the Legacy of Romulus uh, expansion and today we'll do be doing a mission called the Fistful of Gorn. It is pretty much exclusively a ground mission and yep personal reward law. It will be um, I think for those of you who can't figure that out, we will be getting a hold of Law as a uh, duty officer after this mission. Um, apparently we have uh, inspired him to a certain degree, but uh, we have to go and hail Law at this point to uh, see, what he's, uh, see what he's all about at this point, or at least see what's going on. I'm still not wearing armor because I'm an idiot and I just did all these missions in one go and was just really uh, weirded out about how I was having so much trouble and then I suddenly realized what had actually happened after I did the recording. No law. You'll find a note written by him. The Gorn have taken notice of you. With Hassan out of the picture they're making a move to show off their strength. They're sending a man to kill you but I've decided to take him myself. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Gorn are much stronger than the average human or Romulan. Uh, they're very big, very aggressive, and generally not nice people. Does anyone else here th think that that was a still got it shrug that uh, Law just gave us there? <laughs> now this is embarrassing. I leave a death note behind and you find me alive. Well, he's still got it, it seems. So I guess that Law's going to reveal what's happened with the Tal Shiar? Okay, so the satellite station's in Gorn territory, which we have to go through. Well, this should be a piece of cake. Oh, wait, no. What's the opposite of a piece of cake? Really difficult. Yeah, gather the satellite codes from the Gorn. What he basically means there is kill enough Gorn and you will uh, find enough codes on them in order to deactivate the satellite that the Tal Shiar are using. We may find Hakeev. Now, those of you who have completed the game may find this a little bit, uh, or at least completed the Federation side, may find that a little bit amusing, uh, because the storyline's obviously been a bit mixed up, because this is supposed to appear in the middle. However, all will be uh, revealed when I do the Federation missions. And I'm going to do the Federation missions first, I've decided. It's kind of already started, so I might as well, uh, I might as well continue. And the whole idea is we've got to disable these consoles while shooting down a load of Gorn, who don't present a huge threat, to tell you the truth. And, um, yeah, so as I was saying, since I've already started the Federation missions by doing these ones, I'm going to just do all the Federation missions so you guys get to see it. And then I'll uh, probably create a Romulan and then finish with a Klingon. Um, that doesn't seem to be a huge amount of demand for the Klingon content at the moment. Romulan has been asked for a lot, um, but I think the fact that I already have a Federation captain so I can really go through the missions properly, um, I think that would be quite good. Um, I don't really... There is a big thing about being uh, really quick or first with something, but I'd rather do it well if I uh, can. As you can see, I've already made a little bit of a, a mess up with these missions by the fact that I decided that wearing armor was something that just other people do, rather than doing it myself. But uh, at least I'm getting to show off the uh, whole thing as it's uh, going, and I'm able to do a little bit of editing. But uh, I mean, I may be able to run them side by side, I suppose. But I think I, I think that I'd enjoy, and I think that you guys would enjoy the Romulan missions a lot more if I did them sort of as a continuing story rather than sort of mixing everything together. Um, I almost was tempted to leave the these missions that I'm doing now towards the end, but I just decided that since they 
did come with the expansion. I didn't have a huge amount else to do on the Federation character apart from run STF, so I decided to uh, get this out of the way because it is a current feature episode, I suppose. Speaking of feature episodes, uh, I believe that uh, there's bonus rewards on STO currently this month for, um, for redoing feature episodes, so that'll certainly be something that I... Uh, that I do this time round. I am missing a couple of weapons, like the Breen, uh, the Breen ground weapon. I believe it's the CM200. I am missing that, so uh, I definitely want to redo those Breen missions just to get that. Well, another uh, go to here and do X missions. We basically have to kill ten Gorn and pick up the uh, satellite codes off their bodies, and we also have to sever the. Um, satellite cable that's running just along the floor here because apparently uh, burying your cables in the ground isn't something that the Gorn or Salshar or whatever ever thought of. Uh, so apparently sort of 19th, 20th century uh, phone technology or phone cabling technology is well beyond whatever the Talshiar can do. Anyway, just skipping ahead uh, doing all of that because it's really just uh, a variation on go here and do X. I'm uh, coming up to the last cable that I have to sever. And just so you know, the satellite codes do drop off the gun like they would, like a normal item would drop, so you do have to pick them up. So uh, you will end up with a load of common inventory as well, but there's not really much you can do about that. I think that will be the last. Yep, that's the last satellite connection, so we can now override it. And there's a blue thing over here. I like blue things. Obviously, wasn't much good if I cut it out. Okay, and now we've just got to override the main satellite code down here while fighting more Gorn. They're really just not that much of a challenge at this point, and I'm uh, picking up uh, Talshiar lockboxes as I go, because eventually I will want to just waste a lot of money by opening them. Of course, getting that Talshiar adapted destroyer would be quite cool. Any of the uh, lockbox ships are really quite cool, and uh, at the end of the day, if you've already got one or you uh, don't really want the ship, you can always sell it on the exchange for a few uh, few million. So yeah, just another simple mass puzzle here. The numbers above are double the value of the number above them, so the first number's 5 and the uh, third number's 20. And that gets the satellite overridden properly, and we have located Hakiv's base. Hakiv, I think, is supposed to be the leader of the Tal Shiar in this... Uh, in this game. I've been through the Federation campaign once and he's pretty much the main protagonist when you're dealing with the Romulan... sorry, the main antagonist when you're dealing with the Romulan missions. So he's basically just a pain in everyone's backside who you want to see eliminated. But obviously as things go there are much deeper and darker mysteries going on here which I will go into when we go into the Federation campaign because uh, the story of STO isn't actually that bad. I mean, most uh, MMOs have a sort of very loosely knitted together story, but I quite uh, I quite enjoyed STO's storyline. Um, I haven't seen it from the Klingon side, of course, but uh, we'll just have to see how things go. The uh, war with the Klingons tends to take a little bit of a back seat after the early uh, part of the game, when once you realise that there are just bigger things at work. But unlike in uh, Deep Space Nine or anything like that, there's no sort of official alliance or peace declared. The only uh, times really that the uh, Klingons and Federations cooperate are when they're facing a bigger threat, such as uh, the Borg, or occasionally the uh, Undine or Species 8472 when they're in the game. Again, not a fan of what they did to them either in this game, but of course we're. Uh, but of course, you've got to uh, suspend disbelief somewhat because obviously uh, species 8472 in their standard form are pretty much undefeatable. So, uh, putting them as a uh, standard enemy in a game like in Armada 2 just makes things uh, makes people who want the games to resemble canon as much as possible just really angry. So why would you? Uh, so I just didn't go in expecting uh, the game to resemble Species 8472 in any way. 
Of course, it has the standard Star Trek thing of like the Federation moving on in uh, technology and no one else moving on in technology. They've had to do it somewhat with the Klingons, and they did it eventually in Nemesis with the Romulans, but again, still same. Uh, you know, it's like the Federation definitely continues to move on at a rapid pace in terms of technology. And we're just fighting these worms to get them out of our way. Again, they're not a big threat at all. They do have this attack which slows me down, which is annoying more than anything else. It's certainly not dangerous. And uh, looks like we have found the Romulan satellite, or at least the Gorn satellite that the Tal Shiar are using. So this is definitely uh, what we've come to see. And uh, the final part, uh, or the final chapter of this series is about to unlock, I suppose. You think we've located the satellite? Well, considering you're standing under it, that's probably right. Uh, it appears Law's impressed with us, and yep, he wants to join us on the ship. He is a purple projectile weapons officer, and uh, he's one that we're going that I really need because I have a couple of projectile weapons officers on my side, and there he is. Chance to reduce the time to recharge torpedoes, and since I like that ability, I'll probably be using him on my ship. And Franklin Drake, everyone's favourite Section 31 agent, just appeared. This is bad. 